Jewelry Makers. My name is Joey Balistrieri, for those of you who don't know me, and just look at this fabulousness that is on my work table today. I absolutely loved this, mon this month's curated bead box. It was called Pure Passion. Let me just show you the thumbnail. Just the thumbnail is exciting. It was a mix of beautiful pink, red, black, and silver with hearts and roses. It's absolutely stunning. I think they outdid themselves this month. And two of the items in this box were gemstones. We got a beautiful strand of rose quartz and we also got some black onyx beads. So I am crazy in love with this box and let's see, this is my fourth project with this box and it is going to be a necklace using this wonderful heart pendant that came in the box. But instead of hanging it from this loop straight up and down as a pendant, I'm going to connect it sideways and make it a necklace that is around the length of a collarbone. So I have all the beads out here pretty much a little bit of everything the glass drizzle beads the red and silver i pulled some little flower bead caps from my own stash these are amazing when i unboxed this for you guys i did not show you that it's not drilled through the middle like a normal bead the drill hole goes from side to side off to the top so that will hang a little bit unusually on any stringing material and then I have some of the rose quartz left over and some of the marble style glass and the beautiful ruby seed beads and the bead mix here this is what I have left from the other projects that I did I have one of those links left and I had made a little toggle clasp that I did not use on my bracelets so I may use that for this necklace or the lobster claws that came in the box but i'm going to begin let me clear a little space i do not normally have this much on my mat when i'm working but i am doing a random pattern on this and a double strand using the softflex company beading wire this is the 49 strand it's a medium 26 pound and this is the garnet color and i have cut two lengths one is about 24 inches long and one is about um let's see this one is probably a little bit shorter maybe 22 you can adjust this length if you wanted to make this longer or shorter but i just love this garnet color you know if the camera is showing you how pretty it is and you get a little bit more color saturation when you put two wires together and I am also using I have my little small dish here you probably cannot see them but these are the number two silver crimp tubes that come from the Softflex company and they work fabulously well with the magical crimping pliers and I will be using that again I love this crimping plier but you can use regular fold over crimps in this project for sure let me just make sure that I do have the longest length I want to start with my longest length about 24 inches and I'm going to find this place right here on this heart and feed the wire all the way through. And I'm going to match up, bring the two ends together. And then get a crimp tube. So I'm just going to match up those two ends and pull it without damaging the wire. So it's going to be crimped right about there. So let me get one of my little crimp tubes on both wires. This little dish contains them, but it makes them a little challenging to pick up. And I'm going to bring that crimp tube down and have it rest right about there. I want a little wiggle room. Rigidity in jewelry is not usually a good thing. And sometimes a dummy wire is helpful to get a good crimp but on this 49 strand i have normally not needed it so let's give it a go get the crimp tube right in the little well of the plier and close them tightly and when you open it you should see that 
the four corners of that tube were pinched. And now I'm going to go in the opposite direction and just go slowly. I find that I, if I don't go slowly and make sure that it ha is fitting in that well properly, like it is not, that I end up messing up my crimp tube. That feels right to me. And then just close the tool again. And now just keep that crimp tube in that little well and keep going around until you don't feel any resistance and it is forming that tube into a beautiful little bead. I absolutely love to crimp this way. And if it's too small, one of my tips, if this is too small of a little bead for your design, you can always take a regular crimp cover and put it right on top to give yourself a little bit larger bead. Now, I'm going to start a little bit of a random pattern here. I think I'll take my first bead. I'm going to choose something that I really love, maybe one of these with the silver ring around it. And at this point, I'm going to separate my two wires and then do a little something different. Let me see, something smaller. I'll do one of the ruby glass seed beads and one of these little silver spacer beads and a ruby glass seed bead and just let that go down and on this side I think I will just do three seed beads I just lost one I have to get it oh it went on to my light so I'm going to just do that and now I'm going to bring these both together and choose a bead that, let's see, maybe put a little bead cap here. And a rose quartz. And a bead cap. love that and now I'm going to separate my wires once again and choose another little something random maybe maybe here I will do one of these marble style glass beads on this side and maybe leave that side blank and let me see what one of these black cube beads these are gorgeous but they're a little bit big let me see what it looks like oh it's pretty still the hole even the hole is a little bit big so let me see about maybe a silver spacer And one of these look how they string on the wire they just hang so beautifully and unusually with and it's perfect for a random pattern like this where nothing is going to be too matched up see how pretty it hangs I love it so I think I'm going to do that for there and then separate my wires again. What I'm doing is two strands through one bead, then separate the strands and string something on either bead, then pull them together again and put one, the two strands through one bead and then separate the strands. And I'm continuing that way just with a random pattern down till I get to the desired length of my necklace. And then when I get my pattern all done, I'll meet you back and show you how I continue to alternate 
and we'll crimp off and then finish this side. Start on that side. I have almost completed my pattern on this side, just alternating two strands through a single bead and then separating the strands and doing smaller beads and just doing that all the way down. And I liked interspersing those cube beads. They're a little bit heavy and chunky, so I didn't want too many, but I like that little bit of black. And in my bead mix, a couple of my beads had a little bit of black. So I did have an issue that, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes with the Magical Crimper, it makes a beautiful, beautiful, perfect little silver bead but do you see my hole is going over it? And it's not a terrible look. I actually could leave it like that, but I really prefer to have a little silver bead there. So I'm going to remedy that with, let me get my, my bent chain nose pliers. I am going to remedy that by taking a crimp cover and putting it right on top of that magical crimper bead. And so it's, this is just going to make that a little bit bigger and I'm just going to gently close it and form it into a bead. This is one of the reasons that I love the Magical Crimper because crimp covers can be a bit of a pain to get them on right and to get them perfectly round. And I tend to want to fuss with it. Let me get my pliers this way and just make sure it's closed. If you're not too aggressive with it, you can usually, usually get it. I don't want to see the seam at all. Okay, so I remedied that problem and now that is large enough to accommodate <laughs> that bead so it doesn't go over. And then what I did here with looping the Softflex wire through and crimping it is exactly what I did at the top and so I'll string up this side a little bit. I saved out, I have a, an odd little situation in my bead mix where I only had one of these top drilled lentil beads. I only had one of this. I had one of each of these with, they're, they're oddly shaped and they have, they're like half black and half red and they have a little luster so I have this very odd bead mix but I'm going to do a little something with these I do like having that little bit of black so I'm going to start off putting both of my wires through that bead and on that one the bead hole is small enough that the little magical crimped bead does stop it from going and I'm going to continue that same exact thing that I did where I separate these and just do a random pattern interspersing the silver and the red and the pink and the black and just totally at random. It is a completely random pattern, but I am trying when I'm stringing to alternate all of my elements more evenly. So in other words, I don't have the pink beads too close to each other. I don't have two, these too close to each other. So it's just evenly separated and mixed as I go down the length of the necklace. I have finished stringing my beautiful random pattern and come to the length that I want on both ends. And so if you can notice, and I'll have to put some pictures up at the end, but if you can notice, I've just interspersed the black and the pink and the red all the way through the design and I have put away everything except the last little things I'm going to make a little dangle with two of my leftover beads and maybe the bead caps and I've just pulled out the little made with love charm and a few little of the findings this is where curated bead box is so fabulous because everything that you need lobster claw clasps jump rings everything that you need is in that little findings pack pack that we get in the box every month and when you're working it is just so great i left these out because when i make my dangle i may want to add one of those so to finish this off it is going to be exactly the same thing that we did when we started here and i'm just going to feed on that crimp tube and then 
both of those wires back through the tube. So I now have four wires through that number two crimp tube, but on this 49 strand, I do it all the time and it really does work. It's a little bit snug to pull it through, but it's not too, too bad. And you know, it's a nice, you get a really nice crimp on the end. Now I'm going to trim away those little ends as closely as I can get them. And now this is ready. This side is ready for a jump ring and a lobster claw. I could have strung my lobster claw right onto this loop, but I don't often do that because this way, if there ever needs to be a repair made to this piece, a new clasp, or there's you know excessive tarnish, you can very easily change that out without restringing the whole piece. So, and I always check my lobster claw class to make sure that they are functioning before I attach them. And then I'm going to repeat that exact same thing on this side. I've attached my clasp and my necklace is finished. And I did make this little drop with my leftover beads from the mix and a little piece of the same wire, but I actually just didn't really love it. I, so I don't think I'm going to add it, but it's an option. If you're going to do this design, it might be something you want to try. But I am going to do one more thing. I am going to put this little made with love tag on the back of my piece. And I think this would be a fabulous girlfriend <laughs> gift. So I think I'm just going to add it right here on the back of my necklace. It's always nice to have a pretty little charm or a wire wrapped bead dangling from your clasp. It is a detail and a professional touch and finish. Let's make sure that's closed really well. So I absolutely love the way this little sweet necklace came out. The heart is going to be laying up on the collarbone and at this little bit of an angle. And you just have this beautiful mix of glass beads and gemstone beads and all, all the alternating colors of pink, black, and red, which are such happy colors. They just make me so happy. I thank you so much for watching today. If you have not subscribed to the curated bead box, I highly recommend it. And so if you have not, you can use my code Joey35 and the link is beneath the video and you can get 35% off of your first box. It's already a great value. And I have to say this last year, Curated Bead Box has upped their game. We are getting some really beautiful beads in and bead mixes in the box. So I highly recommend it. So maybe it's something you wanna consider subscribing to, but if not, you can always take the design and make it your own, pull beads from your own stash, use different stringing material. You can always have fun with the design, even if you don't get the box. But thank you again for watching. I hope everybody's having fun on their beading mats. Ciao, jewelry makers.